welcome back to Cookfulness. I'm still in and I'm still here in my kitchen. Um, again, if this is your first time with me, it's very great to have you with us. Um, but where have you been and why have you not seen the other ones? Come on, get with the program, get back, watch one, two, and three, and then you can watch this one. Um, if you've been with me all, all along, thank you very much for staying with me. I hope you're all still awake and enjoying this. So today I'm going to be doing a couple of so classics really, very simple, but they're brilliant for any time that you can have them just as a, a normal meal, but they can also turn into great you know, bits of party food. They're really simple, but they always go down a storm. So I'm going to be doing uh, Eat a Mess and with the humble potato, jacket potato, I'm going to do three dishes from that one potato. I promise you. So just, I'm going to start with the eat and mess, but before we begin, as you know, uh, as is my, my usual, I'd like to make sure that I'm calm because even when you're cooking quite a lot, you still get anxious and worried about what's going to happen. You know, could it all go wrong? What's going to happen? You catastrophize everything, which is what I do. I'm sure a lot of people do it as well. So just a bit of breathing. So just get yourself calm in through the nose, out through the mouth. In through the nose and out through the mouth and it just calms you down a bit and then just remember that visual picture that you have hopefully if you've not seen this before all I'm doing is in my mind I'm looking at a picture of a dining table with my family around it all laughing and joking enjoying their food but the important thing is that I'm sat there with them there's not three full chairs and one empty one there I'm there and also I made the food and they're all looking at me and smiling and I'm so happy that they're enjoying it and I'm so happy that I'm part of that family. And that's what cooking's done for me. It's given me back a role. It's given me back some pride in myself, but also of others in me, which is enormous. You know, I'm not cured. I still have horrendous days of pain, of weeks of pain. But what I've learned is that there are things I can still do. There are things I can still make. And that's why cookfulness is so important because it's there to help you make things. You can go all out and go, you know, super cordon bleu, well, not really, but you know, if you want to, if you're feeling up to it. But also there are things you can do when you're having a real bad one. And these today are actually ones that you can do pretty much any time. So second thing for me, as you know, is music. Love my music, have to have music on when I'm cooking. Depends on how I'm feeling, but it's always got to be upbeat. It's always got to be positive memory music, not stuff that's going to make you go, oh, oh, why did I do that? What was I thinking? If only I... None of that. We don't want that. We want music that's going to remind you of great days. M music that's going to remind you of great days gone and great days to come. It's not all about the past. It's all about the future and the present. So I've got some brilliant music on today. I've got... Uh, just a, a, a mix that um, I've put on my cook from this playlist. So I've got some albums in there, as you probably saw from the last one. But today I've just got a mixture of 80s music. I'm, I'm a, an 80s wild child. Um, so my teenage years are all in the, in the 80s. And so great music, great memories. And that's what I'm playing all the time. You can't hear it, but I can. Right, let's go. So, eat and mess. What is eat and mess? Well, eat and mess is basically four ingredients. It's not anything much more than that. So, there's the meringue. Now, I've got some ready-made meringue nests here because, as I said, this is for, you know, when you're having a rough one, you can make this. Now, if you want to make meringues, absolutely do, but it takes time and it takes a bit of planning. This is a here and now, we're off and running. So, some meringue nests. I've got some double cream. We've got some strawberries, the classic eaten mess is with strawberries. So these strawberries are just fresh strawberries chopped. Could you use frozen? Well, yes, you could, but you'd have to obviously defrost them um, a little bit at least so that they're not, you're not sort of biting into it and breaking your teeth as you get in. Um, and then lastly, a little bit of icing sugar. Now what that basically makes you is a lovely basic eaten mess. And that's what I'm gonna do first. And then I'm gonna turn that eaten mess into something a little bit more special, but with only two extra ingredients. Well, actually, it's only one. 
So what do you need to make this? Well, first thing, obviously, you need a bowl, a good bowl to, to put your cream in, a knife for chopping your strawberries, a whisk for your cream. Now, if you're like me and you start whisking and you wish you hadn't started, this one's probably not going to work. This is my absolute beauty. I mean, this is like retro 70s stuff, but it's brilliant <laughs> because you know, not everyone's got a big mixer, not everyone's, you know, and also putting a bit of cream into a massive mixer and you end up with more washing up than, you know, you can cope with. But these little stick things, and they've got little detachable bits so you can do all kinds of things, they're brilliant and they're also not really heavy. Uh, you can hold them both hands if you're struggling like I do a lot, and you just bang it in and off you go. So if you're going to invest in any sort of little uh, blender or, or whatever, and you're not sure well, why should I spend all that money on something, if you get one of these, it's got lots of different attachments. And they're brilliant because you can just get them out. You're not cheating, you're just giving yourself a helping hand. So, last thing is what you're going to present it in. I'm going to show you a little individual one. Obviously, you can make a massive one if you want. People can, can put it in. So, to start with, in the bowl here, I have <coughs> double cream. Now, I'm not going to go through measurements on this one because it's all a little bit about what you like, how much cream you like, how much you don't like, how much meringue you like, how much you don't like. You, you, you'll work out what you want. So in here, you'll see I've got some double cream and it's just holding its shape. So I've whipped it just, not to, its, to the point of obliteration, but you can just see it's wobbling nicely. Now that cream is, is lovely, it's double cream, but it's a bit like cream. So once you've got it nicely whipped how you want it, pour in a bit of icing sugar. If you want to be really fancy, you can sieve it in, but there's absolutely no point. And then just stir it around. Get a little spoon, taste it. If it's at the nice level, you don't want it too sweet, but if it's because you've got the meringue in, this is going to be sweet. So just enough to give you that, it's not that dang flavour of cream, it's that, oh, that's rather nice. And that's your base bit, really. If you wanted to go super fancy, put a little bit of vanilla in there if you wanted to. Doesn't really matter, but you can do if you want. So next, the meringues. Now, literally, even me with my rubbish hands can, can break them up nicely. Actually, it's quite, quite soothing. So, in they go. Now, you don't want huge chunks because that's going to make give people lockjaw when they try and eat it. All you want is just nice bite sized chunks. Now, you'll find as you stir it in, you'll see how much you need. Now, I'm not sure if you can see that in there, but just, just enough cream, maybe one more, to meringue. It's not too dry and it's not too sloppy. You've just got a nice mixture in there, okay? And then lastly, I'm going to bring back my spoon from yesterday because even though I snapped it, I still like it. It's my favourite spoon. It's very hard to let go of the things you really like. So here we got cream, icing sugar, and meringue. It's lovely on its own, it's delicious. We've also got some strawberries that I've chopped. Now in go the strawberries. Give them a good stir around so there's enough strawberries that everyone's gonna get a bit in each go. So you can see it's starting to have a bit of colour and you don't want to smash the strawberries up so you don't want them to start of be all gloopy and jammy. So just be a bit, bit delicate with them. Now, this, I'm just going to spoon this in. That in itself is, is done. That's an eaten mess. That was done in what, how long? Not very long. If you count the whisking, not too long at all. So that, I know that's a small portion, but don't worry, there's more coming. That is a beautiful dessert. It's a bit indulgent, so you know, you wouldn't have it every day, but if you've got people coming around suddenly, or, well, you haven't at the moment, but if you did, or you're, uh, you just wanted to have a nice you know, dinner for someone's birth, your birthday or whatever, whatever, this is great. It doesn't cost much to make it. Keeps in the fridge for ages. It's a winner. Now, as I said, I'm gonna take this now and lift it to a whole new level. And what am I going to do to do that? Well, in here I've got some more strawberries. 
and you're thinking, you've already got strawberries, that's not very good. But these strawberries, I what I've done is I've chopped them as well, but I sprinkled them in a little bit of just normal white sugar. Just enough to cover each one. And I did that about half an hour ago. And what happens, the posh word for it is it is macerating. And what it does is it brings out all the sweetness and it makes them a little bit more mushy. But really, and it can turn, if you've got strawberries and you always get one or two in the packet where they're not very juicy, a little bit sour. If you do this to them, all of a sudden it's fantastic. You can also macerate by adding a bit of liqueur. Um, so um, a bit of orange liqueur would be nice. Whatever on them, even just water, it, it will work. So what I'm going to do with these strawberries is take them up even another level by adding a little bit of basil. Now basil, you're probably thinking, well strawberries, doesn't that go better with mint? And strawberries and mint is, is fantastic, of course it is, but strawberries and basil is absolutely delicious. So just a little chopped handful in there, mix it into your strawberries. Again, if you had smelly vision, you'd be like, oh, this is amazing. Now I'm just going to tip a few in here, into the middle. Top it with a few more of your meringue and your strawberry. Add the rest on top. Oh boy, oh boy. And then the last one is, that if you watched yesterday's session where I was doing yesterday's, who knows when you watched it? If you were watching the session, the last session I did, where I made flapjacks, there was always a little bit left over and I said it'd be great on a crumble. But actually, if you've got really crumbly, crumbly bits, you just tip them on the top. You end up with that beauty. So that is eaten mess, layered with strawberries that you've put in sugar for half an hour before, with some basil, with a bit more eaten mess, crumble top from your flapjacks that you've made, just crumbled on the top. What is not to love? That is amazing. And I promise you, if people eat this, they will love you forever and ever and ask you to make it over and over again. But do be careful because you'll end up as big as me, which is not where you want to go. So, eat mess, done. Right, after the uh, lovely eaten mess, I'm going to do, as I promised, something with the humble jacket potato. Now everyone loves a jacket, well not everyone, but a lot of people love a jacket potato, cheese and beans, a bit of coleslaw, whatever, fish bash, lovely. But you can do things with the jacket potato, especially if you've got a couple left over that are just amazing and it will probably change the way you eat your jacket potatoes going forward. Now, I'm not going to show you how to roast a jacket potato because you just don't know how to roast a jacket potato in the oven as long as you need it. I normally do it for an hour, depending on the size of the potatoes. Make sure they're nice and crispy on the outside and cooked all the way through the middle. Now, what I'm going to do is pick up from going from that to a cooked one here. So these are, what I've got here is a normal white jacket potato and a sweet potato that I've already roasted, so they're just sat here, and I've cut them in half. And I'm gonna make out of this three dishes from one potato, not two potatoes, but you know what I mean. I'm gonna do a filled jacket, which is delicious. I'm gonna do a loaded skins, which is really delicious. And then I'm going to do a potato salad, all from one potato. I promise you, you'll love this. So what will you need to make this? Well, a good bowl. If you're doing a lot of potatoes, obviously make sure your bowl's big enough to cater for as many scoops as you're going to do. Knife to cook potatoes, 
a spoon, a metal spoon to, to getting out the flesh, a fork for squashing, and then we move on to a little bit of milk and some cheese, grated cheese, salt and pepper, and that's going to be the filled one. Then for the loaded skins, I've got some bacon lard on. So these are sort of chopped pieces of bacon. They're brilliant because they're already done for you and they're in the perfect size for this. And then I use butter spray. If you haven't got butter spray, just a bit of butter, a bit of olive oil, it doesn't matter. This is quite good because you can sort of decide where it's going. And then some mayonnaise and my secret weapon, a jar of mint sauce. Don't worry, they're not all going in the same one. So I'm gonna start with the filled jacket. So I'm holding these because they've been cooked and they've cooled down a bit. If you're getting them straight out of the oven and you've cut them in half, you ain't gonna be able to do this. So you'll need a cloth underneath like this. Get yourself a cloth, make sure you can hold it properly, hold it over the bowl and then what we're doing, we're scooping out the flesh from inside. Now be careful because we need to keep the skins intact. But get as much out as you can get. Okay. Scoop it out. And then you should end up with an empty shell. Now the other one I'll do is the sweet potato. I'm going to mix these together. I know, you know, people say I'm rogue and I'm dangerous, and I am, look, sweet potato and normal potato being mixed. Out that goes, and then you end up with a, a shell. Now, for the shells, I have your baking tray on the, on the shells go. They're ready to be filled. Now, in, in this bowl here now, you can see I've got some mixed potato, half sweet potato, and if you can squash it with a spoon, and sort of mix it together great. If you can't, use your fork just to give it a whack down. Give it a good squish so it's all mixed together. Basically, you're trying to create a mash, really. Now, once you've got it to that sort of squishy consistency, you can add a little bit of cheese. Use the cheese of your choice. Use whatever you like. Um, a hard cheese wouldn't really work as well, but, you know, do what you, as you like. So a bit of grated cheese in a little bit of milk and then just bring that together to form a reasonably nice rough mash. A little bit of salt and pepper with my broken salt shaker, a bit of pepper and then mix it all together. So you can see in there, it's just a, a mash mix. Now all we're gonna do is put it back into the shells. So pick up your first shell, take a good spoonful, make sure you push it into all the corners. Corners, there's no corners in the potato. Fill them. So you put them back in, everything goes back into the shells, and now we have two filled potatoes. Now I'm just going to add a little bit of cheese back on the top, just a sprinkle on top. Now I say, you can, do, you can just do normal potatoes with normal potatoes, you don't have to mix them up, you don't have to do sweet potato, um, just whatever potato you're baking with. Remember, it's gonna be hot when you first cut it, scoop it out, mash, mash, put in the flavors you like. I've just put a bit of milk, a bit of um, cheese in, put some butter in if you want as well. Uh, I've just gone for those as they are, and then those go into a hot oven, about 200 degrees, for 10 minutes. Remember, the potatoes are already cooked, the shells are already cooked, you just wanna melt the cheese and get the filling. So I will show you those, how they come out a little later. That is dish number one. Dish number two, loaded skins. So, loaded skins. 
all they really are is, again, we're scooping out. So I've still got half each left. I'm going to scoop out the insides again, but leave a little bit more potato around the inside. So just enough. So we don't get it right down to the skin. Just want to keep enough in there that it will hold its shape. Okay. So see this time there's a bit more potato in there, but we've taken enough out. And then same with the sweet potato. With sweet potato, they tend to come away quite a lot from the side. So just scoop out enough that's gonna keep some in there, but you've still got a nice little boat shape. Now I'm gonna keep this, what we've just scooped out for a minute, for later. I'm gonna use the same tray that I had for my, skin, uh, my filled potatoes. Now, so we have two shells of potato. First thing I'm gonna do is just season the shells. A bit of salt, a little bit of pepper inside the shells as they are. And then I've got my butter spray. Now, I'm just gonna spray the insides with a couple of squirts of this butter spray. If you've got just normal butter, soften some butter and just rub it around. If you've just got olive oil, a little sprinkle of olive oil in the bottom. And all that's gonna do is help it crust up on the inside. So that's your first stage. Next stage, a little bit of cheese. Again, grated cheese. Something that's gonna melt and go nice and gooey. Now you don't want loads, but just enough to cover the bottom, okay? So again, we're not filling it with cheese. We've just got enough. Then, get to your bacon lardons. Now, these are little, let's say, little, little cubes of bacon that have already been made. Now break them up and then just sprinkle them onto your skins. So on top of the cheese, just sprinkle them on, make sure they're all broken up and just enough to cover, so you've got a nice cover on them. And then, again, we're not trying to fill them to like boats, we're trying to keep them so that they've got a bit of a dip. So it's butter, cheese, lardons. And that, again, will go in the oven for 10, 10, 15 minutes till the bacon is nice and crispy. Same tray, there you go, there's another dish. I'm just going to wash my hand because I've been, had the bacon on it. Now the last dish from that potato is a really lovely, it's simple potato salad. So we've scooped out the flesh from those that we've done the skins. And you'll see that obviously that's just from half of one potato, half of another. But if you keep it reasonably chunky and then you add in some mayonnaise. Now I'm using here uh, vegan mayonnaise because my wife can't have normal mayonnaise. So a bit of mayonnaise plonked on. Just give that a little stir. Again, you don't want to kill it with mayonnaise. Just give it enough so that it's reasonably coated. And then my secret weapon mint sauce. Now this is made mint sauce. It's and all you need to do is just a little drizzle on top. Not too much, not you know just probably about a third of the amount of mayonnaise you put in. Give it a little poke round again don't get too heavy handed with it because you'll end up with just mash. You want to keep it reasonably chunky. And that is a little potato salad made from that potato. Now this mint sauce and mayo combo is just to die for and you can use it for all kinds of things. So when you're having something where you've got some ketchup, put this as well, a bit of minty mayo, dipping chips in, dipping wedges in, ah, oh, it's fantastic. Um, if you're having kebabs or anything, you can do that. You can also swap this mayo for some Greek yogurt, natural yogurt. That's really delicious with mint sauce as well. I've always got a jar of mint sauce in the fridge because it just goes so well with so many things. 
people think, oh, mint sauce with lamb. Yeah, but it goes with so many other things. It's brilliant as a dip, it's brilliant as an accompaniment, as a side dish. You can have it in potato salad, you can have it in everything. And these little jars, they keep for ages in the fridge once you've opened them, they're brilliant. So, there we have, from one white potato, one sweet potato, we have some filled jackets, and we have some loaded skins, and a potato salad. Now once you've got this to the point where you're happy, and you like the, the flavour combinations, then you can start to play with it a little bit. So in the, sweet, in the filled jackets, a bit of corned beef, to make a corned beef hash, it's delicious, a bit of corned beef in there, um, put all kinds of things in. You can even put um, bits of uh, mince in there, you know, cooked mince in with potato, yeah, just go mad, just do anything. But once you start to scoop out that lovely hot flesh, start to mash it up, put the flavours back in, you start to create different dishes every single time. So people are going to be surprised. They don't know what they're going to get. It's brilliant. Some aren't going to work and some don't, but that's fine. It doesn't matter. Just keep trying and keep playing with it and enjoy it. Okay? Enjoy experimenting. Right, so I hope you've really enjoyed this session. We've made this delicious eaten mess, which will be no doubt devoured by my girls this evening after they've had the tea. I'm going to try and keep it hidden from them till then. We've made some loaded skins, we've made filled jackets and a little salad. So it, it just shows how versatile dishes can be and sometimes you look at the simplest and things and think, oh, I'm bored with this. But you can just do a little, do a little bit extras. Just find what you like, find the flavours you love and start to make them work in different ways. It's great fun. Add a little bit of harissa paste, add a little bit of whatever, just go for it and try it. And if things go wrong, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. In fact, it's quite funny. Learn to laugh at yourself and learn to get others to laugh at as well because for a long time, people laughing at you, you think it's a bad thing. People like you laughing, it doesn't seem like it's possible. But actually, if you can learn to embrace that feeling of it doesn't matter, it's gone wrong, it's really quite funny. Uh, as an example of it, I was filming the last session and I was doing the kebabs. I had, I was going great, did all the chicken one, got to the veggie ones, picked up a bowl of cauliflower and said broccoli. Don't know why I said broccoli, but I said broccoli. I had to stop, redo the whole thing. And that would have sent me into a tailspin, but actually, it was really, really funny and I told my daughters about it and they think that now everything is called broccoli. There you go. So just enjoy yourself, have some fun, please stay safe, stay well. Please send in any pictures you've got of you enjoying yourself, of any dishes you want me to see, it'd be brilliant. I'd love to share them and, and let everyone else see what you're doing. It doesn't matter what they look like, it really doesn't matter. It's just the fact that you've made it is the best thing in the world. Enjoy yourself, have some fun. If you want to send any questions in uh, on me, on the dishes, on anything, on my dog, whatever, it doesn't matter, send in the questions and I'll do my best to answer them all for you as soon as I can. So thank you so much again for watching this session. Next session, I will be doing two more dishes. Who knows, maybe more than two dishes, we shall see. Enjoy it, have some fun, enjoy your comfortless cooking and I'll see you all again soon. Yeah.